Really quickly before we get out there, here's the gear that we're going to be using today. So these are Promar ambush hoop nets. And so basically how these work is they sit on the ocean floor just like that. Lobster, you can use these for crab too, but lobster, crab, crawl in here. And potentially they could get out, but we're going to yank it up so fast that once they get in here, they don't come out. Then we have these... Oh. These bait cages right here. We'll latch these in, use zip ties or whatever, just hold it to the middle of the cage there. And then we can put our bait inside there. And then finally, we have our buoys with the rope here. So obviously buoy on one end, and then we have a harness on the other. And so these I can clip into that crab, or sorry, the hoop net. And then one more thing before you need, this gigantic piece of paper right here, this is your lobster report card. You can get this anywhere you buy your local fishing licenses. As you see here, the card costs $10.54, nothing too crazy. So this is the part you need to fill out before you get out on the water. So this is mine for my last trip. Gear code two, that's the conical hoop net that we use. And I caught three keepers. So this time we're going out, same gear code. Not gonna show you the location code, obviously, but you gotta fill that out based on where you're lobster hooping. And then once you're done, you're supposed to, before you even get off the water, put the number of lobsters you have in possession, number of keeper lobsters. All right, let's get out on the water. All right, guys, round two, lobstering. I think I'm splitting up these videos a little bit. So uh, we actually went last night, but it's been a few videos now. Um, last night, I got three keepers. Um, today, I was telling Nick, if I get two, I'll be okay with that. Three, I'll be happy. Four, I'll be set. Oh, no, three, I'll be satisfied. Four, I'll be happy. And then more than that will be a bonus. So we're heading out a little bit later today. So we gotta make sure to get our stuff down pretty quick. And uh, hopefully we get that first crawl when the lobsters are coming out. So this is a new place and uh, none of us have ever lobster here. So we're trying out one little area here. And uh, we'll try that for the first couple pulls. If there's nothing, then we'll head out and try uh, the more popular area. But um, yeah, that's the plan. So he was saying you can go in here. I think I'm going to try on the right out. Is that what he said? This thing right here? Yeah, right in here. Let's try it. Let's I'm going to try the outside. I'm going to try the outside. So you yeah, I'll try, try the outside. outside. And then we'll do it. You can try both sides. I know I catch out a fish all the time, and you want to follow it. See, there's a jetty behind me. I'm trying to get right off the jetty. I don't want to be on the rocks, um, but I want to be close to the rocks because that's where those lobsters are going to be coming out of. So on this trap, I'm putting a full tuna head. I'm zip tying this to the trap. Let's see how this goes. Going down. Got all four traps down. I uh, I didn't mention this, but last time I lost a trap, and so I got a new one to, today to replace that one. So we're running with four again today. Hopefully we don't lose any traps. Um, we can go the full day with four. Last time I was only working with three, so the limit on traps per person is five. And if you're on a boat with multiple people, the limit is ten. So I could do one more trap, I guess, if I you know had one and had the energy to do it, but I don't have another trap. So we're working with four, that should be enough to get the job done. It's about 6.21, uh, six set, or the sun sets in about 10 minutes here. We'll let them soak until seven and then we'll start pulling them up, see if there's any lobster in there. So uh, that's the plan, we'll see what happens. All right, second round. So if we don't get any on this round, we're gonna pick them up and try a new spot. Um, I would say in Nick, we're getting a few shorts, but uh, in general, the spot's not producing. Uh oh, there's one in there. in there but definitely too small. Sure. Don't want to lose track of them because uh, 
you end up losing one and then go back to the harbor with one in your kayak somewhere, that's going to be a hefty find. So, first one of the night, definitely too small though. Oh, maybe there's one in there. Alright guys, sorry. Thought I was filming, but I wasn't. But we got one keeper in the next pot and it had three shorts in it as well. So, as you can see there, nice keeper there. It's the first section of the uh, shell there. So that's keeper, it's keeper number one. And I uh, brought a burlap sack today. So we got something to keep our lobsters in. All right. All right, one in the bag. seal grabbed my tuna head. What did the seal do? I think it took my tuna head. Because <laughs> this one had a full head in it and <laughs> now there's nothing. <laughs> Dang. It didn't, it wasn't in a bag or cage? No, I just had it oh. zip tied to the bottom here. I saw them going crazy. Oh well. We're gonna actually move spots, unless this one has some lobster in there. Seems like this spot's not producing for us. Yeah, nothing. All right, we're gonna pack it in and try a new spot. It's been a tough evening. We're, I mean, we're just exploring, so that kind of that was kind of expected, but. Uh, been tough. Like I said, I'm all, I got four in one pull, and then every other pull, probably ten at least other pulls combined. Zero. Or no, one. Sorry, one little one. So I don't know, but we're trying a new spot on this, this round, so maybe this spot will have uh, better numbers. We'll find out here pretty soon. We're going to go pull up right now. I think it's been soaking for about half an hour or so. And uh, yeah, maybe their pull was up to all right, here we go. This pool will be very telling on how they're gonna go for the rest of the evening. So I'll try to get as much on top of it as I can. Forest. Do lobsters like salad? Not a keeper, but there's a lobster in there. Not quite. Maybe in a couple years. No. It's good to see a lobster, bro. Yeah. A little bit of a confidence builder.
Yeah, this one's a zero. All right, last one. I think last time we came, I got one on the last one. Let's see if we can do it again. Lobsters are really good at hiding out. Really quickly, so the difference between these two lobsters, this one's a female, this one's a male. So if you see those little circle flaps on the bottom, a lot smaller on these males than they are on the females here. So uh, that's how you can tell the difference. In California, doesn't matter. You can keep males and females. Just like Dungeness crab, you can keep males or females. They just have to be of minimum size. So I'll show you really quick how to measure them. This one for sure is too small, but it'll be a good demonstration here. So you see these two horns right here. Um, this first shell or the first section of the shell is what we're measuring. So we stick one end of this lobster gauge. So this lobster gauge denotes uh, three and a quarter inches. So we stick one end uh, right in between the horns and then bring it back and you can see this one goes over that first section there. So that's a undersized lobster. So we'll toss this one back um, maybe next year. Oh look at that, he's still eating that tuna. So nice little midnight snack for him. And we'll see if this one becomes a midnight snack for me. Okay, this one. I think we got a shot here. I don't know, it looks kind of small now that I'm looking at it. But this part is the part we're measuring. So let's see here. Nice gauge. So if we look at this lobster, one end on the horns. Oh, it's a keeper. Really pokey creatures. Usually I use gloves when I'm handling, but I forgot the gloves today. Um, you can see all these spines right here. Really spiny. One end of the gauge in between the horns, and then the other end to the back, and you can see that hits the shell right there. This is just barely a keeper, but a keeper nonetheless. Especially when it's tough like it is today. We'll gladly take this one, so. There it is, that's keeper number two. That's a nice male lobster. Honestly, let me know in the comments what you guys think, if you've had these California spiny lobster, but I didn't really notice any difference in taste or yield from male to female. Uh, but nevertheless, that is a male lobster. So this will be going home as a nice midnight snack. All right, so there you have it. There's our two keeper lobsters. Nice meaty tails there. We'll be eating those for dinner at some point. Definitely not huge ones, but keepers nonetheless. Any keeper, in my opinion, is a good lobster. I mean, look at that tail right there. So a tough night of fishing. We did some exploring. It's a little bit fun, a little more relaxing than the last time we went out. Last time we were out battling the elements. Today we are kind of in a nice little calm area. So a little more peaceful, a little more relaxing trip. But like I said at the beginning of the video, two I would be okay with so this was an okay trip three keepers on the first night two on the second night and uh yeah we'll come back again another time so definitely not the end spiny lobster very sought after prized possession and here's two nice keepers for all of our hard work so appreciate your guys view and we'll see you guys on the next one thanks for watching